In the next couple of videos, I'm going to go over these four elements of the Maya user interface. User interface elements, the hotbox, marquee menus, and panels. Essentially, the user interface elements are all of the things that surround the screen that basically you see in front of you. The hotbox is a way of accessing all of the different menus inside of Maya without having to go to the top of the screen to search for menus. The marquee menus are gestural contextual based menus that can be brought up depending on the where the cursor sits in the screen and what it's selecting and then panels are all of the actual windows and editors that you see inside of Maya so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Maya and how it starts up by default when you start up Maya for the first time this is what you're presented with all of the interface is turned on and you get an essential skills movies window that provides you just a really good way of getting your feet wet in terms of camera navigation and moving items around your scene, setting keyframes and so, setting keyframes and so forth. There's also a link to more My resources, which gives you more tutorials and resources to learn Maya. And if we close this under the help menu, you can see a list of a lot of those as well. So you can see there's learning movies, which is what we just turned off, and there's tutorials, how-to movies, there uh, are places where you can download things like vegetation and bonus tools, uh, these, there's a link to the area and so forth. So that's a great uh, menu obviously to check out. So the My Interface itself, uh, this first movie is just going to be over the user interface elements. I like to start people off fresh by just holding the control key down and hitting the space bar. And right away you can see that I've been able to maximize the workspace that I'm looking at and this is a great way of just starting uh, to turn things on and learning Maya that way versus being presented with a whole lot of user interface and trying to kind of wade through what's what's there. Uh, essentially what I just did was turn off all of the user interface elements and those are all of the different uh, sort of tools and mechanisms that surround the screen and where they're accessed in the menus are up here under the display menu and what I'm going to do is turn them back on by tearing off the UI elements uh, menu and we'll just turn them on and talk about them just a little bit as I turn them on. So the status line is where we find our menu sets and these just are the menu sets that you'll see up in the menus and in a little bit we'll look at the, the same menu sets in the hotbox but essentially they turn on things like lighting and shading, uh, rendering and so forth uh, with the rendering menu. Polygons uh, has menus and tools that you would expect to find inside a polygon menu set which mesh, edit mesh, UVs and so forth and things like animation creating skeletons, skinning tools, deformation and of course we've got some in dynamics and so forth and there's also a customized menu so if you want to customize your own and get rid of any tools that you don't want to have showing up in your menus this is a great way of doing that so from there uh, there's file save and open easy to access buttons there are things that allow you to parse out your selection sets so we can select things like hierarchy and groups there are selection filters for objects and then we also have selection filters for different components one thing to point out here is that as I hover my cursor over any of these buttons you can see it starts to change uh, as I move it into the interface it just becomes a cursor as I move it over some of these buttons notice that it starts to change with a little square next to it that just indicates that I can right mouse button click on it and further parse out different components or objects or whatever I happen to want to select. From there we have things like locking and snapping mechanisms, we have a make live button and then we have some render settings and a couple of these are uh, pertain to selections and uh, again I won't go into all of these but that's the status line. One thing to note is over here to the right we do have toggles for other other interface elements and notice as I click this first button this turns on the attribute editor, the next one turns on the tool settings, the next one turns on the channel box uh, for some reason it doesn't show up in there but these are all just toggles that allow me to quickly access those particular user interface elements because they're so frequently used. Uh, the shelf is the next one again shelf just a handy place to keep commonly used tools you can create custom versions of those if you want by just clicking on the shelf editor and you can just click either on the bottom section or this top section just allows you to access individual shelves uh, through a pull down we can turn on the time slider and the range slider that show up down here at the bottom. Of course, if we're animating, this is a great thing to have there for playback. The command line is our script editor. The help line mimics a lot of the pop-up help menus that you see. Notice that the uh, pop-up menu that comes up over the shelf button mimics the one down in the help line. Of course, the toolbox just gives you 
access to exactly that. Tool buttons that um, pertain to selection. There's a lasso tool, paint select, and then we have transform or translate, rotate, scale. Uh, we have a universal manipulator and all of the different manipulators and, and selection tools that we have available to us. One thing to note is there's a square that's down here that's empty right now because we don't have an active tool, but if that tool were active, we could double click on it and bring up whatever tool settings happen to be available for that. And in this case, they actually are available for the transform tool too. If I click on that, you can see that that will change. If I double click on it, if I double click on the scale tool, we get the correct uh, response in the tool settings. So I'll go ahead and close that out. Below that are just panel layout configurations. We'll talk about that when I talk about panels. But uh, that is just kind of a way of accessing these individual items. One thing to note is let's say I have a few of these turned on, uh, maybe in this case just the status line and the shelf, and I hide all of my user interface elements. One way to bring those back is to show all the user interface elements. Well, in this case, that brings back everything that's in Maya, uh, or all of the user interface elements. Now, if I hide those again, if I want to bring back that configuration that I had before, all I have to do is restore those inter user interface elements. So they delineate between restore and show and allows you to sort of keep that arrangement that you had and jump back and forth between that or restoring or showing everything uh, that Maya has to offer in terms of user interface elements. So that is uh, a way of navigating through all those. Another way of learning these is if you notice each one of these user interface elements has a little dotted line surrounding the element itself. You can see that there's a little dotted line here. There's one next to the range slider and I'm pulling up my, uh, my toolbar there uh, from Windows. But one way of learning what these are called is just to just right mouse button click on the, um, the dotted line and let go and that pulls up a, a menu item that just allows me to turn each one of those individual items on and off. So this mimics the menu that we had earlier in terms of turning off those user interface elements and turning them back on. So that is a look at the user interface elements.